today. I am Buddha, as you know me and call me this name. Welcome, Buddha. Thank you very much. And today, I know that you think I'm going to do the crown chakra because that's next in line of my different talks. But I am going to do something a little different today. I'm going to talk about your spiritual growth. It does happen through the chakras yet. But there are many things that I, about spiritual growth that people must realize. They must do introspection about who they are and resonate with that inside. Many people have money doubts and fears and problems and they, and they always say, oh, why can't this happen for me because I am not seeming to grow because I have the fears and doubts and it seems impossible for me to shake them. Let me give you a very simple answer to this. Just let yourself resonate in a beautiful and wonderful way. If you are sitting and something bothers you, something makes you angry, or something gets on your nerves, give it away. What do I mean by give it away? I mean take a big deep breath and blow it right out. It may not get rid of it all right that moment, but you will feel the peace and calm and understanding come in greater. Breathing. You are not breathing as earthlings should be breathing. You are not breathing as humans once breathed. Deep and long. Because why? Because they worked very hard and they ran very fast to do the things that they needed to do in their time. You began as runners. You began as hard workers. Because that is the only way you could survive in the beginning. Do you understand that? As breathing, all that movement is breathing and leaving in the great air, the great freshness. And they had very little quarrels. Why? Because they were always breathing in the fresh and leaving out those things that were toxic to the body. That is how they believe. That is how they were. And you must believe the same way, that you are able to release these things that are part of you, that seem to be dark and hold you down. Why should you let that become part of who you are? You must breathe out and breathe in all that is good. Filter it through your intentions. Yes, your intentions are a filter. Understand that. When you give out an intention, it is filtering out anything negative that might go out of you and make it positive. Do you understand that? In anything that comes to you as an intention, you can filter it as a positive intention because, why? Because you are creatures of light. You are creatures of God. God is infinite. God is not limited to things of natural nature. God is unlimited. If I could tell you all the things that you could do with intention and with great understanding, you could not barely contain it because you, first of all you are in third dimension and third dimension limits your understanding of God. It limits your understanding of spirit. It limits your understanding of who you are in the divine nature. Do you understand that? Third dimension is very heavy. It's touch. It's touch, it's air, it's, it's so solid. And if you could believe that you could float up in the air in levitation, if you 
some people do believe that, but they cannot conceive of how to do it. But that is not the problem. The problem is your belief systems. You do not believe you can do it, so therefore you cannot. But believe, my friends, that the God fire within you, that you feed it with every day, every day give it some food so that the fire may grow greater. It does not mean that you will be less enjoying your third dimension. It means you will be filled with joy. It means that you will greater feel your third dimension. It will mean that you are greater understanding all the things of the God nature. It will mean that you are beyond that of third dimension. You see, one of the reasons you are here in third dimension is to learn how to become free of third dimension. You see, you can become free of third dimension if you believe that you can. Now, it sounds easy, but it's not. But it is, but it's not, but it is. Let me tell you why. Because of your own belief systems, because of the way that you were brought up, because of the peers that come and give you ideas of what they believe, all the confusing beliefs that come, the different aspects of spirit, it, is, is it all true? It is mostly true. Because they're seeing an aspect of it from their direction. They're seeing an aspect of spirit from their point of view. They're feeling it from a portion of their soul or body or mind or spirit. But they cannot feel all of it. They cannot feel all of it because they are contained. Do you understand that? Contained. And so lose your container. That would be the body. And use your spirit. That would be your movement out from the body. You see, the body contains the spirit releases. So therefore, if you come into a time of great meditation, let the spirit move out. Do not contain it. <laughs> let yourself move out from it. Now I know yourself, oh, all this is so complicated. All this is so difficult. But do not look at it that way. You see, that is part of what keeps you back. You're saying, oh, it's so difficult. No, it's not. Oh, but it is because I can't do it. But you can. But you can. You have to say, but you can. But you see, the belief system must come along with it. With the words. As you keep saying that you believe it, will come the belief of it. Do you understand that? You will not be able to contain your spirit if you believe that it cannot be contained. You will not be able to contain your love if you believe it cannot be contained in a third dimensional way. It reaches out into eternity. As you connect one to another, as you become part of who you really are in spirit, love, and confidence, joy and wisdom, you connect. And that is also a way to feed the soul. <laughs> feed yourself with each other, with each other's love. Con connect with each other on a level that is of the spirit. And, but first of all, I will go back to something very, very, very basic right now. Just be who you are. Do not pretend, do not tell people you are feeling this way if you are not. Do not tell people that you are fine if you are not fine. Why? Because if you are to truly have telepathy, they will already know that you are not fine. They will already know 
the truth about what you are feeling, and that will go against their telepathy. They will be saying, they are not fine, but just they are saying they're fine. Be who you are. If it happens to be at that moment you are feeling a negative feeling, let others help you. Bring up your vibration. Let others become a part of you. Now, let that go. This negativity must go, but not to the other people. Take a deep breath. What did I say earlier? You breathe it in and push it out and then their love, who those who are around you, their affection, their great energy, those that are feeling good, will, when you breathe in, you will breathe in those great things that they are giving to you. Because that is their intention for you. You would hope. You would hope. I know there are many questions. So please ask. Because that is the only way that we will get all the information that you need. Because I see that when I am in this state of understanding and feeling the energy go out, the enlightenment go in and out, then, but then I cannot always explain it so well. What so if there are questions, please do ask. What about when there's so many things happening at the same time that it becomes difficult to do that? This is what you do. You, ah, welcome. There is someone else here. Francine. Francine has arrived. Thank you, Francine. This is what I say to you. You must not think that there are so many things. It all comes to you at once. So free your mind at that moment and look inside just at the flame. Look at who you are as a person, at the love that is inside. Look at the space that is inside. Do not look at all these different things. If you will look at these things, they take your attention away from that which is spirit. They take your mind away from that which is part of love. They take away that which is part of moving forward. Although you are still moving forward, it just slows it all down. So all these things that you see and perceive as negative things coming to you, let them go for a moment and look at yourself and say, who am I? Who am I really? What is my purpose? What am I doing here? What am I feeling right now? Concentrate on the, the spirit of God that's within you, the spirit that is truly life within you, and not part of all the, the scenario that third dimension pushes on the body or pushes on the mind, soul, and spirit. But you must go inward and not be looking at that at that moment. Because if that's what you're looking at, that's all you'll see. Now you'll say, oh, I've tried to do that. I've tried to go in and look at myself. But it is so difficult. That is why it's so difficult. Is because you think it's so difficult. Now, if you say to yourself, it's easy, what will happen? Eventually, it will be easy. Why? Because you believe. What you believe is what happens, what is. What you believe is what is. Do you understand that? What you believe truly is what is. So start believing, start bringing that energy to a positive place. Start, you see, I will give you an example of that. When I was young, and they were teaching me that I was to be a great teacher, and they knew that I could conceive of the concepts of being a teacher one day, 
But yet, there was many of those things I had trouble with. Because why? I was troubled as a child to believe that who I was was who I really was. And I would say, no, but that is not me. That is not who I am. That is not what I believe. And they said, why not? And then I would try to explain what they would consider to be shadows in the air. They said, you are recreating shadows in the air. You are telling me of the shadows that are all around you that you believe are there but are not. And I said, what? What do you mean by shadows in the air? And they said, you are creating things out of nothing. Your soul comes in pure. And why is it that you are seeing the ghosts of doubt, the ghosts of misunderstanding, the ghosts of misbelief, or the ghosts of self-unawareness? You must be aware who you are. Let me tell you how to become aware. Go into a meditation and say, I want to be my true self. I want to be the spirit that is within me. I want to have no doubts. And I said to myself, they must believe that I am who I am. So why don't I believe it? Why don't I believe it? And the reason is belief itself. You have to release it. You have to say, I want to believe the truth. I want to be in the in the space of truth. And if this is who I am, then this is who I must be. Is there other question? Yeah, I have one more question. This is still Sabrina. So, you know, because I have a lot more difficulties when the body is in pain. Yes. And ah, with pain, yes. Yes. I will talk to you about pain as well. Okay. Pain also is something that um, we can release. Sometimes the, the body is in pain, but that doesn't mean it blocks the spirit. Do you understand that? Pain, if you let it, blocks everything. If you let the pain block it, it will be blocked. If you let it block understanding, it will be blocked because you have the excuse of pain. And everyone feels pain, do you not? You are third dimensional. Everyone feels pain. Everyone experiences pain, some in greater degrees than others. But pain is part of third dimension. But it does not, it is not part of your spiritual life. You can rise above pain in your spiritual life by the, having, going out with your spirit and letting the pain stay in the body. Do you understand that at some point? But, your belief system also has to do with pain as well. If you believe that this pain is permanent, if you believe it cannot get less, if you can believe that it, it is there because you did something wrong or it is put upon you for some reason, then you will still continue to feel the pain and it will not teach you a lesson. One of the lessons on third dimension is to get rid of third dimension. <laughs> I said that earlier. And pain is part of third dimension. Now, let's work on that together, shall we? Because I had pain because I was a third dimensional being. But how did I deal with it? I had people around me, priests and or rabbis or what, whatever you want to call them, that helped me to understand how to relieve the pain in very many ways with Reiki and acupressure and acupuncture and energy work and things of this nature. But they said to me, all you need is your own energy. But you have to believe that your own energy is strong enough to do it. 
And I believe that third dimensional energy sometimes gets weakened by the fact that there are so many outside forces pushing the spirit inward and studying, studying, letting it pour outward. Because as you pour your spirit outward, the pain goes out with it. Do you realize that? Pain goes out with it. Disease goes out with spirit. When, it, when spirit is moving out in love and understanding, it, anger moves out with it. Deception moves out with it. Love moves out with it. Anything that you can intend to move out of the body can move out with enlightenment as you reach it. Do you hear the Maharishi ever say that he is in pain or suffering? Or do you see only constant joy on his face? Do you see that those that are enlightened and moving into levitation and things of that nature, do you hear them say, I'm flying around but my back hurts? No. They are released. They are released from the third dimensional part. And they find joy. Of course they have to come back to third dimension because that's what they were born into. And when they come back, perhaps they will have a backache a little bit. But as they move forward in their enlightenment and their, and their thoughts of great positivity and not dwell in the doubts and the fears and release as much shadow energy as they can. Oh, I understand. I, I can, I see it and feel it all through you. Oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. Yes, I hear that doubt. Stop saying I wish and start saying I can do that. I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. Stop saying I'm not sure if I can do that. You can, you can, you can. It is your belief systems that stop you. They ground, although you may be grounded, they ground you to the point of never being able to lift off the earth. Do not let that happen. Because the people that are hearing my voice right now are to be teachers, examples, great healers, speakers. That is why I'm speaking today. I want to help you in your basic, basic inner third dimension to release the doubt. Release the fears and tell yourself you can. Because the moment that you believe with all your heart that you can, you can. You can. Now, let's move a step further. Not all things are meant for all people. So if you cannot reach this point, perhaps you're not meant to. Perhaps your dimension is meant to be as it is. But the people that I'm speaking to right now, the people that are here and people that are understanding what I am saying, understand that they can deep inside. Deep inside you know. Deep inside you feel that I can. You know it. You already know it. And I love that. Because here I am telling you that there are no barriers for you in this world. You must become teachers of great light. You must. This is the beginning of a great revolution of love, kindness energy, wisdom. You are at the beginning and you are the most important part because without the beginning, without the beginning of great power, if the 
beginning is weak will not come to fruition like it should. But you must be strong. And you must be powerful. Within yourself, let your God make you powerful. Let God be that. I am not saying if you are a Christian or a Buddhist or, a, or whatever. That is not your only personality. <laughs> that is not all who you are is Catholic or German or whatever you label you with. You have no labels in the spirit. There are no labels in the spirit. You are not gay, you are not straight, you are not transgender, you are not whatever. There are no labels in the spirit. Do not label yourself as weak or strong. Do not label yourself. Because that's confining. That is confining. Do you understand why some great shamans will not give you a label? Because a label confines you. I'm not just Buddha. That is a label. I understand that I need one to share with you. But it doesn't confine me because I am not just Buddha. Other questions? If anyone so I just, I, I just wanted to, to say maybe we have to believe we are already in spirit with no limits. Your spirit has no limits. Okay. You are a fragment of God. Yeah. You are a fragment of God. How your spirit lives within you is up to you. You can contain it. Put the fire in a small container. It still burns. Or you can let the fire burn in a greater and more significant way. It is up to you. The third dimension within you tells you how to contain it. But the spirit yes. lets it free. Feed the fire. Feed the fire. Now, if you suddenly just say, all right, the container is gone, the flame is still that free. Why? Because you have not been feeding it. The flame needs fed after that. But you know what? It does get more oxygen, so it will get a little bigger because you've taken it out of the container. But it will not be a bonfire until you feed it logs and wood and things that are substantial. Do you understand? It needs substantial food. Yeah. So, so we have to find a way to open the door. Exactly. And that is your belief system. Your belief system, I cannot say it more than a, a million times, your belief system holds the flame in here. Whereas if you believed it could be at the end of the universe, your flame can burn and be seen at the end of the universe, if that's what you intend, if that's what you believe. Elohim, Thank you. take them for example. They have been very active within the earth just recently. And Elohim is a fire that burns. And they want the fire to burn. They want the fire to burn. And they come to humanity and tell them about their great love for humanity at this time and the messages that they have to give and the blessings that they multiply give to those who are moving forward and are helping them to enlighten the world and free the spirit from each human so that they can be at the next level. That's a wonderful thing. This is just a beginning because you cannot possibly change all your belief systems in this second. 
but you must work on it. There are things in third dimension you say, oh, I'm guilty, I'm this, I'm that, my, I don't, my religion says that I'm wrong or bad or doing something wrong. Resonate with who you are. Resonate with the truth of who you are. It is not wrong to be who you are. Do not let that become a hindrance to your greatness, to the fullness of who you are. Because yes, you will have third dimensional activities and encounters and beautiful friends or sexual relations or love or these do not have to in inhibit you. But just intend them to be part of who you are and let the spirit come through them because your actions in third dimension can be spiritually charged. It does not have to be separate. It does not have to be foul. Do you understand? It can be beautiful. Third dimension can be beautiful as well. And I know that many of you are confounded by the third dimension. But this is just a spark. I will speak of this again because it is not sinking in completely with everyone until they hear it again. The, the words that I am saying are now starting to flow through the body, flow through the mind and the spirit, and they are going to attach themselves to you, but they will be a reignited in an, another time. Reignition of the fire and how to feed it will happen at another time. Some of you are already on fire. Some of you are ready have found the flame and are knowing how to feed it and become more beautiful and more relaxed in many, many ways. And blessed. Because you're not only blessing others, you're blessing yourself. You see, when you block a blessing, you're always blocking two blessings. Why is that? If you block one blessing, you're blocking your own blessing as well. Take that into consideration. When someone wants to give you something, and you say, no, 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 I cannot take that, I am not worthy, you're blocking two blessings. One, the blessing of the giver, and one, the blessing of the receiver. Do you understand that? Because the giver gets a blessing for giving. And the receiver gets a blessing for receiving something they need. It is a beautiful and wonderful transfer. So let that happen. I heard Elohim say that yesterday, and I thought it was profound. And I think it is very profound what you are feeling right now. The energy of density. The density that you are feeling right now. The, the energy that you are feeling right now wants to get through to you to let you know that you are a spirit of God. That you are an element of God. That you are a fragment of God. A finger, an arm, a leg, the head of God. In many ways, you integrate yourself as God or God. In this particular period of time, they need God. The world needs God. Not only the God within themselves, the God outside themselves, the God within you, the God within the elements you can bring out the elements of God in nature by speaking to them, understanding that it's a part of God, knowing that the, the trees, the plants, the rocks 
the animals are part of God, bringing all that energy into yourselves and sending your energy out to them as well as an exchange. <laughs> I speak a little too high right now. But I love you. Is there more questions? I have a question about healing. Yes. I have been told a lot about the potential to be a good healer, a great healer. And I'm wondering what I can do to make sure that I reach my potential and share this gift. Your potential is already reached. You just have to believe that you are the great healer that you are. You have to believe in the healing spirit coming from you and going into you. You must change your thought process. You said, it, it is all a matter of the flame. Let the flame tell you who you are. Don't let anyone else tell you who you are. Don't let the world make you afraid of who you are. You see, you should be fearless with God. Because if you are a God, if you have the Spirit of God within you, you should be fearless. Who can harm you if you believe it? If you believe it. And that is my whole message. Our belief systems are so damaged. Our belief systems are so damaged by third dimension, by each other's negativity by bringing in the in the world in a way that does not feed the spirit but hinders the spirit bring in the intent to feed the spirit that does not mean you have to change your third dimensional life your you don't don't have to leave your partner or, but be the example do not be the one being pushed around by negativity but be the example of the positivity. And how can your negative partner or friend or whatever continue to be with you when they know that you are the example of what they should be? There will be a change. There will be a change, and it's inevitable. Change is inevitable anyway, but it will be inevitable inevitable that you accept your Godness, that you accept the love within you and show it as an example and there will be inevitable change. What happened when I was young? They, the people around me gave me that example because that is what they were there to do. They were to be an example to me of some of the aspects of who I was to become. But they knew that the fire already burned very greatly within me because I believed so strongly that it was part of who I was. I let their example help me grow into the man that was Buddha. And that is a label and it is definitely when I was on earth, I definitely was labeled. And I definitely was not as powerful as I could be. But now, in this era, this day and age, if I were to be with you, I would lose that title for myself. You may use it on me, but I would not use it on myself. Do you understand that? I am part of the great I am. And that is not a title. That is what it is. Like we all are, right? As you all are. Exactly. I am giving you a very high lesson today. A very high information. Because it deals with the crown as well. The next part of the chakra lesson. But your belief system I want to be opened before I talk to you about the crown, which will be the next time I come. But this time I wanted to talk to you about your beliefs, 
and your spirit and who you really are and who everyone really is. But you are the ones that must be the example to the earth. You are the ones that must feed other fires. You other, your example will feed the fire of others. Ah, oh, what a great and wonderful thing. If it feeds one fire, your life has been intimately grateful. Glorious. Grateful is not the right word. But it would be grateful as well. But that wasn't the word I was looking for. But it would be infinitely expanded because you are a hundred times greater than you think you are. A thousand times greater than you think you are. And then, ultimately, greater than you think you are. But you must find and release the fire, feed the fire, understand the fire, understand who you are, what your talents are, what your resonations are, what perception of spirit are truly, truly there, and grasp on to a greater understanding of spirit because the mind is limited. You will never understand the spirit completely. Everyone has their own aspects and perceptions of it. But it is so great and infinite, I could never explain it to you. And I don't even know, fully understand it. Having been here many, many times in spirit, I still do not comprehend the full joy, love, and understanding that I feel at this moment. I could never explain it to you. But I can explain to you that I want to transfer that to you. And that is why I'm here, to transfer anything that I can energetically to you that might help you to understand that you are perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Buddha. You are very welcome. Love you. I love, love you very much. And the next time I come, we will speak of the crown. It is very important. The crown chakra and those chakras in the aura, the silver and gold, those are the things I will speak about next time. Is there any other questions? Just one more question. What if uh, you have contracts for certain things? Your contracts can be broken. In this day and age, if you are part of the beginning of all things that are to come, you may break that contract and move into a new usefulness. If that is where you are coming from, if that is how you resonate, and if that is the fire that is within you is to be the beginning of the uh, enlightenment, you may break it for that great purpose. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, anybody? If there are no more questions, then I will leave you now. Thank you. Much love, Buddha. Thank you for coming. Much love. Blessings and fire come to you all in a great spirit of joy and love because joy and love are together. Do you understand? And the fire feeds both and is both. Thank you. Love and fire.